much as possible. Okay, so uh, today we are covering some pretty key things. We're going, let's, let's start off with uh, opening up our GitHub. And let's also open up our Eclipse. I think I'm actually streaming this at 1080p. So most of you guys will have some sort of workspace directory that's going to look like this, where it's like your, it says users and then your name that you're logged in and then workspace. Uh, you as I as I select my workspace, uh, I just want to remind you guys that uh, the default is more than acceptable and, and it works just fine. Excuse me. You know what's funny is I don't cough this much at all at night. I think it's just the morning. Okay. Go. All right. So, uh, I am streaming this in uh, as much high def as I possibly can uh, per um, Twitch. Now, uh, you know, they just have some restrictions. Wait, is it building? Yeah, it's like building the Maven project still, so let's give it a second. Oh. I wonder if they've cut off. <gasps> no. Because of this whole thing. Whoops. Why is it? Alright. I wonder if they turned off their Maven repo. No, no, it's still up. Woo! Made me so nervous and scared. All right, so uh, 179 RO3. Oh, RO3 does not exist anymore. That's weird. They literally removed RO3 for some weird reason. Um, wow. Okay. So it will work under RO2, though. So let me show you what I'm looking at and why I got to that conclusion. So I went to the website, uh, and if you remember, that's going to bring you out to, like, here, and then you go org, bucket, Wait, this is new. That is weird. Okay. Um, so what org, bucket, and that's, this is where the Maven directory of stuff exists. I feel like I need to wash my hands. They feel a little weird. Uh, and you can see that 179RO3 is no longer in the, the queue. So we're actually going to roll back 179.RO2. Um, let me pull it up. Does it say snapshot? No. It has been final wrapped. Oh, snap. All the snapshots are missing. That is what happened. 
That is so... Huh. Alright, well, let's do it. So, 179 to RO2, non snapshot. I think this is probably related to uh, all the fun we've had with uh, Wesley. Oh, see, now it downloaded it, and now it's resolved the issues. All right, so let's just go ahead and, because we made a change to the Maven part of the project, let's just go ahead and update the Maven project itself. Um, you only really need to do that when you actually make an adjustment to the Maven project itself. Now, um, let me get something up for myself. It it thinks that my SQL core is already installed here somewhere, and my SQL tutorial is not. That is no good. Alright, so... Oh, snap. Alright. Thinks core is installed somewhere. Where would it be installed? I mean, it's already been updated, so I'm okay. Alright. <coughs> Alright, let's just do this clone. I want to get this stuff synced up. So let me just kind of walk you through what I'm doing right here. Because I don't want you guys to see this problem. And they'd be like, oh, what's going on? Like, how do, how do I fix it? So let's say, like, I've been switching my, my OS drives and all this stuff. And so things have gotten a little mucked up on my side. So when I come over here to KOTC tutorial, there's already, you know, a tutorial that exists here. So let's go ahead and try to clone it into our drive. I just, I think this is actually a perfect scenario for you guys to see what happens. And as you can see, it automatically identifies, hey, there's something there. It's already been committed. Um, and my hands definitely need to have some sanitizer or soap on them because they are, I guess it's like a new, a new um, mouse. And so I'm like touching it and fidgeting with it. Let me just be right back. All right, talk about feeling like 10,000 times better. Woo! All right. Let me just check one more thing. All right, so as you guys know, then you just literally come in here and you go, uh, like, what do you want to call it? Um, this is the line that people are going to see. The description is what they're going to, like, look at once they, like, see. But if you look at Enable Fix, that's what this first line is. So, uh, update, um, 
Dante bucket for sure. Seven dot nine dash R O dot three dash snapshot two one dot seven nine nine dash R O point two. Okay, and then once we sync that, this becomes part of like the official repository, and anyone who downloads it. Uh, well, for you, this, remember, for you, this goes up to your repository, and then from there, you guys are going to have to do a pull request to my repository to update your suggestion, if you make one. <clears throat> now, I have actually been working on kind of what we're going to be working on, uh, but I've been doing it through here so that I could... One, start to actually get this thing ready. And two, I wanted to get some testing done. So let me connect core because we're going to use some pieces of core and I don't feel like redoing the, the, the stuff for it. Right, where did core go? Oh, one more thing. Remember, after you do it, you're going to have to import it in. So I have to go to existing Maven projects, KOTC tutorial, boom. Let me browse a little bit, because I don't want tutorial, I want core. There we go. Now, I want to see something here. Oh, Jesus. I don't know why I keep doing that garbage goop. Do it every goddamn time. Um, Alright, so we literally are going to have to do... What the... F yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do the same thing here. It's so weird because I was doing this last night. Maybe I actually have RO2 snapshot downloaded already. That's why it's fine. But, um, yeah, that sucks. At least we can get the, the source stuff that we need. Okay, so let's, uh, now that we got that stuff synced up as we needed to, let's go into tutorial, and tutorial, as you can see, I just want to, like, make this really obvious, like, I've purposefully created a different set of, even structure, you know, like, if you notice, like, this is kind of going off of what I've been teaching you, where this is going off of a more traditional um, Minecraft, or I'm sorry, more traditional Java setup. So, uh, you know, you, there is, once again, how you choose to code is exactly that. It's, it's a choice that you've made and you have every right to choose to do it one way or the other way or whatnot. Uh, I'm just installing Mumble, you know, probably who else would watch it are like, you you install Mumble like every single day. No, like I said, the OS drive, I've been swapping it out. This is like the third OS drive that I've like swapped in. Um, anyhow, so this file, let's just open it up and see what's going on here. All right, very basic, very boring, you know, setup in, in, in this part. Now, let's go ahead and create some new stuff here. Let's create a new package, and let's call this new package handlers, right? Why not? Um, 
So it's going to be the total name is going to be co.kotc.tutorial.handlers. Okay. Keep in mind, these are on the same level, even though this is there. This is about the same thing as me calling it root. And, and that's just because, you know, I could have called it main or whatever. I guess it's it's just a little bit of a habit of, like, old school practices from different things. And maybe some bad practices, too. And then let's create a new class. And let's call this class uh, my SQL. Yep. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a MySQL. Because remember, uh, we've already kind of done some of the other pieces with MySQL. So at this stage in the game, you should already have a MySQL installation. Now let me check to see if I have one on this computer. I do. And on my screen, which you, yeah, perfect. Why is it? All right. So on my screen, let me let me just uh, unlock this taskbar for a second. I just want to show this to you for just a, a super short second. So if you look right here, you actually see the MySQL thing is right here running, and it says that uh, it's monitoring the service, but because it's red, if we click on it, we're gonna be able to see the status of it. It's online, but the status of the service is stopped, okay? So we will need to actually start this if we wanna make an active connection test to it. The other way that we could actually look at this information is by going to properties, <clears throat> oh, what the frick am I saying? Don't go to properties. We could actually go to control panel, or I'm sorry, we could right click on, on here and go to uh, manage. That's what I meant to say. Because we can look at our services panel. Now, you could also do a third way by going services.msc, and you get a little thing called services. And that would also bring up a, screw, a screen, screen that was similar to this, but only had services. So that's three different ways that you could do what. I'm about to do. Regardless of the one or number two or number three, it's going to be essentially the same. You're either going to go to services here or you're going to have the services screen and then you're going to scroll down to MySQL, whatever you named it. Because remember, it tells you we suggest to name it MySQL 56, but it's up to you. And the status is manual because it doesn't start when the machine starts, but it's not disabled either. That's really the three options. If you look here, it's manual, disabled, or automatic. And then, of course, automatically it starts. It's the same thing, except it, it literally, after the machine starts, waits that amount of time before going in. I leave it as manual because this is a test server. Now, if this is a live production server, we're playing like for the actual game. Um, if people are logging in, then obviously I want to make this as best as I possibly can, and that would be always left on. And also to have more resources dedicated to it. But we're not talking about that today. So, now, if you recall back on this tutorials uh, page, we did something called Extends uh, Java Plugin. Now, over here, we could actually do another Extends, but instead of doing Java Plugin, we could actually extend our own uh, our own plugin, so that this is actually an extension of that plugin. Make sense? Okay. Um, KOTC tutorial. I actually have to look to see what I named it. Ah, it's a little bit different. So you would actually you want to make sure that it's. Ah, there we go. And then I can include, and you can see here, co.kotc.tutorial. That's where the, the thing is packaged. So we can actually import that. And now, what have we just done? <clears throat> well, 
let me show you what we've just done. Now this file will, will act differently towards certain coding procedures. For example, if I did this, right, git logger.info, let me remove this for a second, and then let's type in git logger.info parentheses, and then semicolon, and we typed in here, this is a test. Now, this should have no problem, except there's actually errors on it. Why are these errors here? Well, more specifically, let me just check something because I deleted that uh, thing. I should have done it the other way around. Mental note, do it the other way around. Okay. Uh, get logger info. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I knew there was something missing. Okay, so there we go. This is what I wanted to say. Like, why is this set up here, and why does it look like this, and why is it uh, wanting it to change the method type to void? Like, it just doesn't even make any sense. Well, that's because the function of get logger is actually part of the Java plugin. And in order to get that into here, we could do it a couple different ways. But the easiest way to do it is to extend my main plugin um, in there. And then by doing so, everything that this other guy had in it is now automatically passed over into here. Now, why is it still being weird. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let me look what says change. Oh, 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 so this is a little bit different because there's nothing that it's doing. Like if you looked in here, like we would have to have a reason for it to do here, but it, this error would occur. It would be a different error uh, but if I don't extend this, for example, let me just do some, like, public void test, boom, 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 okay. Uh, and once again, this is just simply creating, uh, I'm not allowed to create a variable called test. Oh. There we go. All right. So uh, now if I take this away, that should error again under the get logger because there is no method for get logger because that method existed under Java plugin. I hope that's more clear now. This other erroring is still valid, but it, it's just not as valid because it was trying to say that there just wasn't anything there. Um, all right, so let's let's start this process. I'm literally going to copy some data over from uh, this other piece. Um, or better yet, let me move this over here so we can work on these kind of like... At, and just keep in mind, this is literally not even correct. I'm looking at this stuff right now. Load claim data is incorrect. I think I made changes. I didn't sync it to the repository because I made them on my uh, laptop. So, uh, well, let's put this back because we want to extend here to see Sorrel. Okay. Um, now, this is not important. So, let's talk about what we're going to do. Well, the first thing that you can see over here is literally I'm establishing some two variables. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I even like included the little comments on my code because I intended for you guys to see this stuff. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So what did I do? I literally just created two variables, two string variables: jbdc underscore driver and db underscore url. All of it in uppercase. I usually do not do variables in this fashion. This is more of a special case because of what type of variable it is. Anytime I deal with uh, SQL stuff, 
or database connections, I sometimes break convention rules, but normally under convention rules, it would probably look like this, you know, um, but let's just leave it at that for right now. And then we're going to need, actually, we don't need that. Then we need to initialize the driver. Okay. Now I actually could do string driver JBC equals that. Well, I could, I could do that just fine. Once again, this is set up like while it's testing something else. And and you're going to see in here that the driver, which is a string, is going to equal com.mice.jdbc.driver. Okay. And then these are and these are actually things that internally to MySQL and to Java are understood. Okay. And then this is going to be a little more complicated. Did I? Oh. I was like, why did I do that? But I remember why. We don't need these either. So, because um, this is for MySQL only. So obviously MySQL doesn't need to have a switcher, like you can see here, a switcher for different... Let's look at what basically this is doing. So what this is doing is if, and then get config, get the string of database type, and you're looking to see if it equals MySQL in any fashion. Well, what is that doing? Okay. Well, what that is doing in the most simple of context is actually looking at the config file of here and as you can see we've added some new stuff in here and one of the things that database type mysql okay okay i gotta remember not to save and sync in fact let me pause no no because no, some of this stuff is important for you guys to understand okay so database type mysql database type okay database type see and this is my config file so it looks at the, at the initialized yml variable the just like we talked about um how maps and hex maps have a key and a value this is very similar okay uh it's reading this is a special type of reading get config and get string that exists for specifically for a bucket specifically for this config file okay now if i did not have um extends main or extends kate whatever mine thing is called in this in the real thing it's called main then uh i would have to do it over and have some extra variables just like that get logger down here would not be able to ex to be able to exist in that way so this is me just showing you and then we're going to put it over here and clean it up and you guys already were looking at the correct version so it's okay um so what we're doing is if this statement is true then you're going to set these variables for mysql else you're going to say it's invalid database type and return it however we're only dealing with mysql right now so we don't need any of that garbage goop okay so let's look at this stuff well the first thing is a jvdc driver okay and yes by all definitions uh i could have typed in com mysql jvdc driver for wherever that gets started but just set it as a string. It's so much easier. The next line is dbr dburl, which once again is a variable we create, and now we're saying it equals all of this. Okay. So what is this? Well, obviously this first part, just straight text. Okay. It's jbdc colon mysql colon uh, forward slash forward slash. All right, and and that is just like if you were to do um like this part right here is basically the same thing as like http 
colon forward slash forward slash. Okay, it's literally calling a a URL formatted string. This JBDC colon part is actually initializing it even more specially than just a regular URL. So the next part is git config git string database server. Once again, it's just going to do the check. Okay, it's going to look here and it's going to say database server. Uh huh. What is it? Local. So it literally imposes. So if we were like looking at how this line is being read by the computer, it's so far being read as such. And I'm going to space it over so you guys can see, like, kind of like, oh, no, I guess I should do it there. So let me null out this line. All right, so other than the first two forward slashes, which are really just to show you what, it, this is what we have so far. Local host, and then, once again, plus, and then it just has straight slash, so no spaces, no nothing. And then... It says, okay, we'll get the database name. Well, the database name in this case is Minecraft. Okay, and once again, you would change these variables in your config, and that would be different data that's imposed into this field. Okay, so all this is done in all of its glory, and there's no even trailing slash at the end. Okay, it's literally just to create JBC Micro localhost Minecraft, which is formatted as. I'm going to the server, just like you would go to an address, and then slash, like I want to go to a page, except the page under this new JDBC rule, the way that it reads that URL, is that it goes server database. And this is actually what it's reading. So then it gets in there, and it would actually tell you, is there a MySQL local host with a database Minecraft? That's it. <clears throat> Super easy cheesy. Once again, if anyone has any questions, please, 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 um, feel free to ask them. Let me, let me put this back over here. Let me lock this task bar down. And let me just check one thing. Okay. So, whoops. Yeah. This is an example. Yeah, sorry. I want to get this over to the point where it is not bothering. Test. Test. Yeah, that's fine. La okay, sorry about that, guys. Um... Yeah, let's... This is an example of Speaks, an audio compression codex. Yeah, and I wouldn't do my headset setup because I have... Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, automatic certification. You guys are learning all this fun stuff if you guys haven't learned it already. And then add new. My address is... Co. My username is Fultram. Yes. Connected. Server connection rejected. Wrong certificate or password. Let's Connected. correct that. And then, boom. All right, so there's no one on it. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Sweet. All right. So then the that's the first piece, right? The, the next component of this process is um, kind of gain some credentials. Just like we've established like the, the driver and the URL, which we're going to use later. We're just setting them up right now. Okay. The next component we need to worry about is the username and password. Once again, pretty straightforward. Exactly as we discussed before, it's going git config, git string, it's going to take this value and it's going to insert it as the user, and then it's going to take this one to insert it as the password, okay, or as the variable pass, sorry. Then we need to create some, some default connection things. So these are just saving all the variables. Once again, 
we're going to create some new variables where we got a connection, which is a connection type. New, new thing we haven't dealt with before. Uh, this is specifically for... You know, so when I copy and pasted it, it added Java SQL connection, and then when I copy this one, Java SQL statement. So it's actually adding in those components as I'm pasting it over from the other code. This is all existing. Um, let me actually break this out a little bit further for you guys. And then... So as you can see, statements is literally the same thing as that query will be. But let's let's get to that part. Now we're gonna try something new, and it's it's a brand new thing. It's called try, okay? And try statements are just as they sound. It is a statement where it says, "Why don't you try to do this?" And then if you can't do it then we're going to have some sort of exception or issue. And you can see that I, I basically fixed this. Um, now, I just let's, let's just copy everything in. Let's just copy everything in because I, I will go through each component. But I don't want all these errors confusing people. And I actually want to... Do there to there. Okay. All right, so this is literally just to prevent confusion. Okay. So we're going to try. What are we going to try? Well, the first thing we're going to try is save that. First thing we're going to try is. Dude, what the hell is this crap? I hate when these like weird. Is it not a semicolon? It is a semicolon. All right. Let me just copy and paste that line over. I thought I did, but that's so weird. It's just so weird that like sometimes these errors are ridiculous on this thing. All right, so um, we're gonna try. What are we gonna try? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to register a JDBC driver. This is literally um, the first step in, before you can like try to get a, correction, a connection, you have to like say, it's like the step of opening your browser, right? Like you're like, okay, I want to like open a web page. What's step one of accessing a web page? First, you got to open a browser. It is literally the platform that is going to read and do everything for you to be able to see that beautiful web page. So in the case of I want to get some Microsoft SQL data, right? Like I want to connect to a Microsoft database or a MySQL database, sorry. Um, the very first step is literally to... This is being read as a variable. That's... This is just so weird. All right now it is. And it's still got that stupid ass thing. I I literally I, I'm always baffled when these weird things occur. Um the only thing I can think of is yeah, there was a missed some of these things got shifted over. What am I missing? Oh, I get it. I was missing an end bracket because this finally ends here. Gotcha. All right, so that was my fault. That was totally my fault because this all... Actually, this should be right here too. Um, technically speaking. This ends the finally and then this ends the try. Okay. This says it ends finally. 
It's a lie. This is a lie. That was my mistake. And finally, and try. That's how that's actually. Okay. Sorry. Once again, I told you guys this was all offset. Uh, and then it says it's still off by something. I am about to punch this thing. Let me minimize this. Sorry. Sometimes if I just kind of export it, it like refreshes the whole thing. That is so weird that it like, it doesn't even like error it out, I don't think. Oh. Did it like copy over something from Maine? Let me check to see if it did that. It literally might have copied over something from Maine. God damn it. Alright, all right, that's that's fine. Alright, so um oh my god. There's there's just so much bad stuff that's in this code. I'm like looking at it, it's like me playing with stuff and I like synced up weird ass shit. I'm so sorry about that. Alright, so uh so just like we have to open a browser, we have to initialize a driver, which is very similar. And the way we do that is we actually type in class dot forename and then the JBDC driver. Once again, if this is the first time that you've ever done something like this, then how would you know? It, it, think of it this way. If you're reading a book and you come across a word for the first time, do you know what that word means? No. But if you saw it in context, right like you saw it already in the book that was written and you're like you're, you might be able to guess what that word means similar thing is going on here like if you had to like if you were writing a book you would never be able to use that word because you don't know that word so you might actually have to open a dictionary and be like what's a good word or like a thesaurus like what's a good word that means something similar to this or and and that's now all of that is done on Google, you know, like these things. Are, this right here, generic Java, Java low and, and Java slash <coughs> MySQL. Okay, actually, this part isn't even MySQL. This part is generic for either one. Any, I mean, anything that's using the driver JBDC, which is most SQL connections. Um, Microsoft SQL and Sybase and all of them that are like the enterprise non-free versions, they might have like a special thing to set up. Let me just remove this, see if this makes a difference. No. I cannot believe... It's just the weirdest shit ever, like, when that happens. And it drives me bonkers. Like, if I went in here, I just copied all the way down. Let me look what's before her. Oh. 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 No, I, I know what's going on. Okay, so I, I just realized what my mistake was. Oops. All right, so we have all this code, and, and this code will be great, except how are we going to call all this code? Because if we typed in my SQL, like, imagine, I'll just go to something. We typed in, like, um, KOTC tutorial dot my sequel which would be like the class name and then we like want to do something with it like that's just a class there you can't do anything with a class a class is called but onto itself a class is just a definition it'd be like 
it'd be like, oh, I want to play Xbox, but all I have is an Xbox box, you know, like all I have is the the cardboard container that they put the Xbox in. Well, I can't play Xbox with that. So how do we make this like usable? Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do something like this. Public void. It's called Critium Method. Um, some programs call it functions. I prefer functions, but Java likes to call them methods. Whatever, Java. So let's just create a public void. Let's just call it MySQL. Or let's call it Connect. Um, and then... Ba -ba -dum, ba -dum, okay? And then all the stuff that you were like, why is it not? Okay. And let me see here. Try catch it seven seconds. Da 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 da. da, da. Actually, th yeah, that's the end. Finally. So I was right the first time. Oops. And finally, and try. And then boom. That was the issue, I bet. Yes, yes, it was. Okay. So it was it was because it was I'm creating a statement inside of something like I can't call this. Like I can't possibly in a thousand years call that variable. So that's why it was there. It like literally was like I don't even know how to define how wrong you were, Ryan. But you're really, really, really wrong. Alright. So, now that we've corrected this craziness, let's continue. Um, so, now we got this thing called connect. Now, remember, void just means it doesn't have a return statement that gives data back. Like, it's just going to run all this garbage and then be done with it. Boom, be done. So, what are we doing? Well, we're trying to... We've registered. Then, the next step, just like we... Uh, the next step is we actually have to open a connection. Okay, and there's a format for that. This logger line, not necessary. It's literally for debugging. And we can actually talk about... And so, it, because it's for debugging purposes, because you would, if you, we did this live, you would be seeing all these log entries. So, what we could do is we could go if... git config dot git string... debug if that equal now remember normally when you do stuff like this statement this is the statement right and then you would go equals if it equals something uh, uh, debug equals true right Except, uh, oh, sorry, you don't need to equal, equal, equal is true. Um, if you do this in this context, because it's a string, it doesn't really know how to match this equals these letters. What, and, and this is a, this is the exception to the rule. If that was a get integer, then you would not go ignores equals case, or any of those things, you would just be like, oh yeah, it equals five. Okay, if it equals five, then what, right? And whatever, the statement. I just want to like clear it up so you guys can see what's going on. So, um, yeah. So you can't really do that because of the other issues. And... This one's in the wrong place. That's why it's being weird. That should be there. So if this was like get integer, debug, and then it equals one. So like if we if we made uh, it like this, then that could pass. But when you're dealing with strings. Strings are a little more complex as far as like coding is concerned. So when we deal with uh, strings, we actually do equals, and then you can either go equals, and then that means it's text sensitive. So true, all lowercase, true capital letters would not be the same, 
or we can do equals ignore case, in which case capital true and all lowercase true will become the same thing, which I recommend for any time you're allowing someone to input data equals ignore case that if it's a command if they're put in if, if they're put in, in a, a file if they're put in the config if if a human has to type it just do equals ignore case because you do not want to have someone be like every time i do slash command blah 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 it doesn't work right or i keep getting this error and the error is because they typed it with the wrong capitalization. It's just stupid. So, if uh, equals ignore case true, right? And then in the config file, we would have debug colon false as the default. And then someone could come in here and go true. Because <coughs> this is how this config file works. Whatever you type in this config file, when the person first loads that that plugin, the config file will not be existing on their system. And so it's just going to copy this file into that directory for them. So you want to put on here very default values. Like if you're creating a plugin and you like type in your actual Minecraft server database table name and your actual username and your actual password and then you upload that to anyone then uh they now know your username by password and, and stuff and that might be fine if you set up your security correct so they can only connect local host because then they got jumped through so many more hurdles but it's still not a good idea all right so if config debug equals ignore case true and normally you would have like a statement like this but there is actually a special way to write a line if you only have one statement okay if you have an if statement but you only have one thing to do afterwards no else's no nothing else you can do a semicolon and then the rest of the line now, technically, uh, I could have put that on a separate line, but I don't want to for several reasons. So it, it just says, if this is true, then it's going to dump out this. And then you can even go the next step, and you can actually go, like, debug, right? And then that way you know, oh, I'm seeing this message because debugging is turned on. I'm not sure, but I think, yeah, I'm going to have to say info is the, the best one to do right now. Um, okay, so that's, if you, I know it's a longer line, but what that means is unless you turn debugging on, you're not going to see all these lines. So as your server is normally being played, it's not going to, and also, because you've just added this one line in your config, all you have to do is add this statement before any of the lines that you don't want to see on a regular basis. But you do want to see, if you're like having trouble and you turn on debugging, restart the server, and then you'll be able to see all this stuff dump out. Okay? So, like this executing query, boom, we don't need that. Actually... Uh, other way around, Ryan. Um, we can do that like this. Boom. Executing query. And then... Now these we always want to see. These are serious errors. Informational stuff of like where things break down, we don't need to see. So you could delete that whole line. Or you could add this thing in where it says there's a debug option. Either way, you're going to be set, and you're not going to have spam. And most importantly, your logs are going to be kept clean from unnecessary information because your logs are going to get full of a lot of data, users logging in, logging out, doing stuff. Um, even if you don't have debugging, turning on, and getting all these extra lines, you still have a fair amount of data 
in log just from the default stuff. Um, anyway, so let's go back to this line. So we basically have turned those two lines into only debug lines. But we got to create that connection. So we the whole purpose of this was to open connection. And we go back to con because that's our variable con. And what is and, and we even defined it up here. We set it as null first. And we did that so that it was initialized at this level because this is a nested thing. Because you can you can go down a nest, you can't go up a nest. And what I mean by that is let's say I didn't have this line, right? And I created it here. Now, this may be a bad example because, technically speaking, I think... No, it, perfect. Woo! I was like, I'm not sure if I actually call it again, but I do. If you read down here, and if you read this how it should be read, this try statement kind of really ends right here. Okay? And that's why we nest stuff in this order. So it's very easy to see where things wrap up. Okay? And if you ever are not 100% sure, you can actually mouse over it, and it'll pop up the block to tell you what is the starting point of this. So we could have gone here, and the starting point for this is is that. you know. But at the same time, boom, and try. So why... Well, that's not talking about that yet. We're way up here. So um, so if I, in this situation where I create connection here, I have no way of nesting back up outside the try. It's the variables initialized inside the try. So when it comes to this statement right here, connection really doesn't exist anymore. It has ceased to exist for most purposes. So when it gets down here and it tries to do stuff with that variable, it's like, I don't have a variable. And it suggests actually to create a variable. So that's why we actually will initialize this variable up here. And, and by doing so, we can now call it inside here and set it. And here's where the crazy part exists. When we get down here, because we've set it here, it, it reads the line. So it creates the variable, then it assigns it a value when we get to this connection line. And so when it gets down to here, if it did this part successfully, then it would actually say, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not null. I have that variable. And then I got to close it. Assuming that it exists, because I'm going to try to close it here first. Okay, so let's just go back to this again. Now you understand that you can't, you can nest down, but you can't nest back up. Uh, and then that should be a pretty universal understanding. You can nest down, but you can't nest back up. So you can always go into something with the variable that you've created. But if you create a variable inside of something, it doesn't be, exist in the outside container. But everything naturally flows down to a point. For example, if I created several nest layers down, I actually might get an error where that variable doesn't exist anymore and that is a a problem of a totally different sort and one that really we're not going to discuss the, the mechanical details because it's just kind of more than this session is ready for today uh, maybe on another day so how do we do what do we do with this connection well we are going to get driver manager which is just like a connection okay uh and then it's you're going to use the the function driver manager and if we look up here we actually see driver manager it's something that we added just like connection just like we did statement and just like we would do get logger and dot and we see different options okay um one of those options, whoops, I actually wanted to show you that for a little bit. One of those options get connected, but it's also some other things. You get drivers, you could do um, this print line. I know in, you can see how old this code is. Like, I, like you would not use this in bucket, but um, you would totally use this in regular Java applications. In fact, this whole thing is 
useless. That whole section right there is useless for you guys. Um, I it literally ID age first. Like oh, that's all. That's all fine and daddy. So we can just kind of talk about that when we get there. But um, system line printout is like the normal way for Java. So if you're making your own independent application, you would use system line out to make things appear on the screen. That would be the best way to describe it. It takes whatever you're doing and it puts it out there generically is like, oh, we're just going to pop on the screen. Like, oh, there's the next line of code. There's the next line of data that's been fed to us. Because um, that's how most applications work. But, um, and I was playing around with that to see like what it did in Bucket, but don't worry about it. Uh, so let's go back to Git Connection, because that's what we want. Once again, we've used the driver manager. Now we're going to get a connection, hence why we're using connection. Okay, And remember, I told you that, and if you haven't got this before, the word that's actually after it is actually the type of thing that it wants to do. So this is, you see how it says connection? That's what it wants the output to be. So this one's driver this one's actually enumerated uh, enumeration driver this one's an integer a print stream a print writer you know and we could deal with with all those different things but we have a type connection so we're limited on what we want if we did something different there it would actually tell us that the connection variable is invalid for this effect <laughs> and it wouldn't do what we want it to do it would do something totally different but I wanted to explain what that colon space line answer was inside of what you were seeing. It's actually what the output is going to be a type as. So driver manager, get connection, and then we're going to use those variables finally. We're going to use DBA URL, which literally just means it's inserting. Remember how we typed it out? That JVC MySQL uh, my uh, localhost uh, slash a uh, Minecraft. So it's going to put that all in one space, and then user is going to be whatever we typed in here, db underscore user, and then pass is going to be, you know, db underscore password, because that's what we've set these variables in our config, which got assigned here, and now have been used here. Now, the format of a Git connection, let's remove this for a second. You can actually add arguments. And you can see, like, oh, well, it's not the right one. Like, I want more than a password. And you can look through here, like, oh, okay. String, string, string. Oh, look. They were all strings. So, like, if you were doing this backwards and forward, like, let's say you were like, okay, I Googled connection, right? And, like, MySQL connection or something. And they gave me this data for driver manager, and I knew they had to do this. But I wasn't sure, like, because clearly when I come in here, there are so many different options. Like, I could do one string, and that pass is just what it took as the first one. Like, I think, actually, if you're doing this, that one string is supposed to be your, your URL, if you do this one, it's supposed to be your URL and then um, something totally different that's not what we're even working on. This one's a URL, and then if you notice, it's that same properties type, and then it's actually got a class type that has brackets and data in it. And once again, this is just adding like so many layers of complexity that you don't even need right now. Um, and this one's just so much easier to use anyway. So let's return that data the back the way it was. <coughs> okay. And then um, and then we'll see if there's an error because we'll be able to tell down here under exception handling if there is. We'll get there in one second. Actually, let's jump. No, let's, let's stay in here. Okay. So now we've got, let, we've literally initialized a driver. And it's trying to make that connection, okay? So it's blue, 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 and it connects. Now we have a connected database. As of this line right here, 
If all your information up to this point has been correct, you now have an active database connection to your local host Minecraft database with your actual username and password that you've set up and, and stuff. So, now you can actually do stuff as if it was more like SQL. Okay? So, once again, the step is we're executing a query. Queries are called statements in this world. If you talk to the database people, they're like, statements? No, they're queries. And then if you talk to the programmers, they're like, no, they're statements, not queries. I have no idea why these two groups of people cannot just agree on a term. They literally just do this stuff all the time. There's always networking people, systems administration people, database administration people, um, programmers. They can have one word that between those four IT groups means four different things. A really good example of that, off to the top of my head, would be trunking. And I won't tell you how... In fact, it's so different that in the, it's actually five definitions because networking people have two different words for the word trunking. It's two different definitions for the exact same word in their own field. Anyway, back on topic. Um, so statement. Oh, I, I guess the important thing to learn from that is that if you're using a word that you think is right, don't feel like it has to be there. Start Googling things that, like if you see certain words popping up in your Google search, like you're doing like um, queries, Java, right? And you start seeing statement pop up, like look at those, those reoccurrences. Don't ignore them because you didn't Google them. Think about you might not know what you need to know to make this happen the way you want it to happen. And let's work from there. So uh, now you know what a statement is, is a query. And we've already initialized it. So let's set a value to it. So statement equals connection, just like this connection with the driver manager, all that stuff set. Because we want to, we actually want to make a statement under that connection. It's already been set up. It's active. It's active as of right now. Okay. But, assuming that it's all correct. But, we don't have anything done. So now, connections can actually add types to it. So now, I know it's a little confusing, but once again, this is one of those types. And create statement is, is just makes the easiest one. Um, and you know that you want a statement because statement is what you call your queries. And if you look through here, you wouldn't see queries even shown as an option. Okay? So... You kind of go back and you look void, void, save point, boolean, SQL warnings, maps, integers, like these don't seem right. And then you get all the way to the right one and you're like, oh, statement, I've seen it like a thousand times. So then you create that statement line. Boom. Create statement. Now, the temptation here is to think, oh, well, inside this bracket is where I'd put my query, right? No. I know it's stupid. I'm not saying it's not, okay? But if you looked at the source code of the Java, the Java docs for this stuff, you'd actually see that because of the complexity of possibilities that they've allowed for create statements, they actually want you to add another process. So, what we've done here is we've kind of opened a prompt box to say, what's my query? Okay, you're going to create a statement, but you haven't done anything with it yet. You just... Literally, it's, it's, it's just like before when we're up here. This is opening browser. This is connecting to your website. Well, this would be like clicking search inside that website so that 
you're searching for content inside that website, not through like a Google browser, right? And then we have to create a string for what we're doing. So this is actually, sorry, all the way to select. This is actually the first time that you actually have SQL statements being used. And this is the initialization of that variable. So let's say we want to do something different. Let's say we want to select um, select let's what would be good what would be a good thing to select how about how about select users or how about this select UUID from the table users okay where um band is true how close is that to being an accurate statement pretty close okay i'm not going to give you a, a finished one yet because i don't want you guys to like get too confused but this is kind of the format for a basic concept and then what that would do and once again you really select this has to be capitalized i believe but i think everything else actually in theory could be underscored um but you would just select the unique user id from the users table where band is true and that is so like where username is and then we could go like plus and then we could like have some other variable like variable name you know and that only reason it's, it says that is because it doesn't exist but like you obviously if we created a variable called variable name, then we would actually be able to create that SQL and we create it dynamically now. So like maybe we got that variable name from uh, the user who was casting it or maybe like in the command they typed, they typed in a username, right? So that is the basic premise for that. And it doesn't have to be just select. It could be member. This is where you guys are going to have to look up some of my SQL stuff, but it could be insert UID. And you could do that whole thing where it's like is unique and all other stuff. So like there's a bunch of different options here for what you can do. But once you set your your SQL query text, what are you what are you doing? Okay? As a variable, you can now use it. So We've opened up the browser, we've connected to the website, we've got that search engine, we got a variable established on what we want to search for. The only thing left for us to do is actually search for it or like execute that query. So that's actually called a result set. Okay? And you're like, well, why didn't they call it statement? Like before, you we weren't talking about statements? Well, statements and queries are the same but they're also not the same. And that's why this whole premise is stupid. But it does make sense once you start doing it and you start doing it enough, it's going to come second nature. It becomes no more different than the word table. And so like by definition, the word table literally means two things that are opposite of each other. It or or it it means two things are opposite. What it literally means is table is to put something at rest. Like we table that discussion. Also, table also means to bring that discussion into activity. So it means to put something to rest and to put something in activity at the same time. If you look in a dictionary, 
literally you're going to see both those definitions in there um, unless it's just a bad dictionary but you should see table as two different things one is an old definition one is a newer definition but they both mean the same thing and that's kind of what i'm trying to say statements are queries because they're like the search box of the queries but they're not the query itself because the query only exists with this string whatever we call it that is the actual query syntax and the way we're going to use that is we're going to call result set which literally if you mouse over it it literally is a database result set so whatever i got in return from this i you know whatever i type in here whatever pops out is going to be popped up as a result of the result set and then we're just going to call it rs because it's short okay um, generally when you get these big things that have all these lengthy things, you, the shorter the thing you want to have it. And then when you are like going to, especially within themselves, like a lot of times you'll see even one user things. Like for example, this variable is E. This one's SE2. This one's SE. Like that's literally the variable name. We don't need to know that. We don't care. And all the, way, the reason I named it was SQL exception, SE. E is exception. This is the second SQL exception. So it's SE2. And then you're like, well, well here's SE again. Well, remember about the nesting rules? Well, let's get a little confusing because guess what? I've now nested far enough in where my SE is now a new variable. And I wanted to show you guys how that actually works, but we'll get there. I hope today. Okay? <clears throat> so. We now have a result set. We now have it set up the variable as RS. And you know what statement means, as TMT. And we know how this is working out. Dot means, and we're doing something with it. And all we've done inserted is the SQL. So we've executed the query of this statement connection. So we literally run con.create statement. And if we wanted to have this one line, we could actually do it as one line. We can actually create execute query right here. Okay, and then SQL. Like this is is a possible thing. We did not have to initialize it here. We could have waited and initialized it later after SQL or something. But remember, statement's not a result set. Okay, so if we did it this way, all right. Um, like if we put this up here, just to get rid of the error, I just want to show you. Okay, it's going to have a totally different issue because the, re the end product of this is that result set. Remember how I told you when you were like putting periods and this, this colon stuff? It's looking for result set. So this, by doing execute query, we're now looking for a result set, not a statement. Okay, and that's where this order of process becomes both the minutiny of what we're doing and it also becomes the secret to making it work like a lot of times when people have errors or issues it is because they're like one minute sliver away from the right answer literally you might have had gotten all the way down here and gotten all this stuff and then just simply didn't realize it and you you did the execute query line and you're like but why is it not working well it's not working because you defined it differently or it's not working because you need to like first do this other step and initialize this one more piece or something so don't get frustrated when you have these errors um errors even when i had my error up here i just had to think about it for a second i paused i thought about why would this statement line have it and it's frustrating it can be at least but I got there all right so let's keep it moving on because we've literally done like 12 lines in, in an hour um, so now we've got this thing and it, it's, it's popped out and, um, and 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 then so what's the next thing well, now we have all this data and literally the way this data is gonna be like written out is it's gonna be written out kind of like I'm not even going to show you how it's written out because 
the while statement kind of makes it super easy, but just imagine it being a long list of data. It's just so boring and long because it's just, it's really popping out every single UUID, where username is, whatever, and it's, it's doing all that stuff. So if we had done something like select... Um, select ID, ID, age, first, last, from users. That's kind of what it's expecting from here, right? So I've literally gotten now, if, because I didn't say any where statement, I now have every single user loaded. Okay, so when we do while rs.next, it's going to look at the next entry. And if remember, databases are a single line effectively of text for that row. And each row would be each result set. So if I had a thousand users, I would have a thousand rows, all of them with their own ID, age, first, last name, assuming that those variables were all set. Okay, and so once I have established what I'm doing with that, then is where I would do something with it. Okay, um, and and I'm I'm kind of keeping this part shorter because we're going to be covering this a lot. I mean, a lot. Like we're gonna have to create, um, we're gonna have to create a whole different case. Maybe we're gonna do it through ifs. Maybe we're gonna do it through different uh, methods. But we're gonna have to create a situation where we can pull data for claims we can pull data for players we can pull specific types of data like we can say well if that user is banned or not banned or if the person has this amount of money or, or, or not um, so we're gonna have to have a a result set query for every single different one of those okay or we're gonna have to get a bunch of data and then sort through it so we're going to have to create many, 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 many of these statements. And the, probably the way that we're going to do that is we're probably going to do something probably here at this line-ish area where we're like, if, what would we do? Let's say we did if, let's create a new variable up here. Let's call it string is type. And then let's say if type that equals equals ignore case. Uh, let's say it equals load player data. Then we're gonna do this try with this player data. Okay, and then we're gonna do something with the player data. Okay. Um, do something here with data. And it could be anything as we uh, take a hash map. So we take, um, let's say we got a hash map called uh, user name, uh, user, ah, here we go, band list or users band, right? Like maybe we want to see all users banned and refreshed or something. So obviously we would change what we're doing here. But I, I just can't think of like what would we do for this. Oh, here we go. If we'll do um, under 18. Boom. Okay. So I mean, we're going to call it um, a UUID. Okay. So then we could go equals... A UUID with a variable under 18, called under 18, equals rs dot get integer. Actually, we don't need to do that. We could do equals age something, you know, and like, and then whatever we want to do. So, like, we could say if your age is, for example, if age is less than or equal to uh, is less than 
18. Then what are we going to do with it? Well, then we're going to put you in a hash map. And we could say the hash map. We take the hash map name. We'll call it under 18. We haven't initialized this hash map, so it won't truly work the way we want. Under 18. And we do put because that's actually what we would put. Um, and then we're going to put the UUID, because that's we want to put the username as the key. And then the value, which would be their age. Right? And then that way, uh, later on, we can call through a hash map, which is much faster than calling this data SQL. So like when the user logs in, now they're in a table that's like under age 18. And then let's say maybe that user can't type swear words or something. Or maybe um, swear words when it goes to the 18-year-old, like, or automatically changes into, like, different words. So you have, like, a, an age-based uh, sensor. So, like, you know, someone... And then you could be, like, if... And then let's say one of these things we pulled up, we, we signed is called preference. Preference. Or actually we go else if preference. Equals. Ignore case. True. Maybe they, you know, then we put them as, um, or maybe the table is, um, instead of being the table being under age 18, maybe the table's called something like, um, sensor text, right? And then, so now you would do the same thing here sensor text and if this existed as an actual variable we wouldn't have these these errors i mean clearly i gotta clean some stuff i gotta put this here i put that there i got to put this here and this here um because we got to get some of the stuff kind of cleaned up but uh and you can actually see here's the thing Result set like I can take this out. I I, I don't have to put it in there because if I put it in there, it's actually happened after. So actually, I would do something like right here, where after you retrieve by column name, now I'm like pulling all this gobbledygook out, right? And then like literally, preference would be not a string. So string preference equals rs dot get string get string. And this last one's going to be um, I'm trying to think because remember the results that's like what query line it would be. So like the table would be maybe like uh, sensor text, right? Uh, and and so that's literally just one thing. So if a person's under eight under eighteen, we might auto censor them. And then if they're over 18, they can get it by setting their, their, their preference to true so they don't have to see foul mouth words being spoken. Um, and then that would be literally one way that we stored the data. And now we've manipulated the data into doing something. And we'll talk more. We've talked about hash maps already. But I don't want to spend too much time in this section. I just want you guys to understand, or actually in this section, what I want you to understand is that we're going to be doing a lot of different things in unique components of these. Um, and, and, and if we really wanted to, we could actually create this up here and put something down there. But remember, what we type in as our query is what's going to be controlled. So either we have this huge ass query that calls everything, or we start doing some smart stuff and we defined a little earlier. So now we've done all our stuff, like we've assigned all our variables, we've used all the data, okay? We're pretending that we've done everything we wanted to do with this data. Well, you don't want to leave the those, those SQL connections open. Um, it slows down your server, it slows down SQL, 
Uh, it also increases your chance for data corruption because uh, of the way that tables read and securely try to input data in. So like if you don't close this connection and then a new query comes in, not to do a select but to do an insert, that could be a problem because you're reading from a table that's trying to be uh, written to. And, and just trust me, it can be a problem. Um, we'll get to how that's a problem later. As we start testing some of these things and we start going through and we're like seeing these active errors, then you'll start to be like, oh, I get it now. Because we're going to have errors on purpose just so you guys can see them. I promise you that. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Oh, because it's doing a UUID variable is UUID. Okay. Not the type is UUID. All right. Anyway. Which would probably be UUID and then maybe up here. UUID equals UUID equals. You get the idea. It gets string. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And that's how I've established that setup. So get string. Actually, it would get, is there a, we'll talk about how we do this, because actually we can't get a UUID. I think we actually do have to get the string, and then we're going to actually have to convert the string over to UUID, and there's a process for that so that we'll talk about uh, probably tomorrow, because um, it's getting a little late today, but I'm almost positive we're going to be going over, over that stuff. So the last things I want to cover in this, session or just kind of like briefly what we're doing down here okay so this is not error handling this is just good measure so we're going to try to disconnect all three of these okay now at this point we've opened the connection and closed the connection and everything should be fine we should have no errors but if we had any problems we got to add some ways for our errors to be handled because if we didn't do these catches and there was an error. It could literally shut down your server. It would, it could possibly lock it up or shut it down so it's completely non-functional. So catches are one of the most important things because they can literally prevent or cause errors. So you, I've broken them out into which ones we're doing. So we kind of do them in the order that they were created. Okay. So the first one is a JDBC. And you already know that we're doing a SQL exception, SE, and I put in here this error handles for JDBC, but keep in mind, this is the order that it has decided. We are not deciding this order. This is not an actual thing where we're telling it, do this. It just knows that the first thing I did was that could possibly cause a SQL exception is that your JDBC connection doesn't exist. And that's all the way back up to like here in the variable type, right? So then the second thing is, well, that first line where we do the class four name, there could be an exception for that. Like there could be a typo in this part of the line, not just that part of the, the variable. Um, and so these are both done, once again, if it's SE here, then it's going to be SE here. And then print stack traces is just what you put out there, okay? So you know that it's going to be, it's generally going to be one of two things, either a SQL exception or an exception, okay, um, when dealing with this type of data. Now, you might see some other ones later, but for the most part, exception catches most things. SQL exceptions catch some things specific for SQL. So we will handle errors for the, both of those, and we're going to print uh, print stack traces out. And a stack trace is kind of like a, a debug thing. In fact, remember when we started up the server and we saw those errors that helped us like figure out where? That was actually a print stack trace provided by Bucket. Without those print stack traces being coded into Bucket, we wouldn't have had that data. We would probably have just had the server shut down or lock up 
um, because of the type of error it was. Not all errors generate shutdowns and lockups, but when you're dealing with these tries and whiles and fours and stuff like that, there can be a loop-like effect or a um, a thread-based issue where the server may think it's still running, but it can't handle new data or new inquiries because it's never kind of finished what it was doing earlier. And so it just kind of sits there going, I'm working on it. So that's why we have these stack traces. And then you won't often see a finally, but a finally is a statement that literally says, once you're done with everything else, okay, you have to do this. This is what you're going to do no matter what. These catch exceptions only occur if there's an error. The finally occurs every single time without fail. I sometimes like it, sometimes don't. I always go back and forth. I try to separate them out if I see them. Um... Sorry, little neuroses right here. All right, so what is it that we're doing with this finally? Now, with a finally, you can do all sorts of things. You could be like, oh, return, there's no value. You could say, oh, this is where we're going to add some errors. Like, if you didn't get success before, you could try for success a second time. Or you can try to, like, give up a second time. And that's what we're doing here is let's say there was a problem and we did not get one of these closed out properly. Well, the next time someone tries to open, it may literally error. It might say, oh, you can't open to this connection. You can't do that. That connection is already open, so you can't create a new connection to it. But we don't want that. Like, that would, that would end us in the game. Like, people wouldn't be able to log in or do whatever it is that needed that data. And that would be bad. Or people would have these things where like, hey, I'm not getting this permission or this whatever that was saved in this database. And we clearly want every user to have all their data attached to them every single time they're logged in and detached from them when they log out. So the best way to do this is for to do another try statement. And we're just going to basically do the most obvious thing. So if there is a statement that does not equal, in other words, if it's got like that that query box open and it's ready to send another query in, let's just close that out, okay? And then we're going to catch, just like that. And you notice that there's no print stack because unlike the error handling here where like it was trying to do something and it erred, if we get to this point and we haven't closed it, I mean, we could do a print stack trace, but... It's not really super necessary, but you could do one here, okay? If you can see, I actually did one here, so why don't we just do it? Why don't we just go... SE2 print stack trace, just, just, for, just to make sure, right? Why not? And then we're going to try something again. We're going to try to see if the connection's close, and if not... That's a more important one. Now, notice that the, um, the variable SE is used again. And why? Because once we wrapped this up, okay, that statement is ended there. Any variables established in that section are are not the same. And so as you can see, SE was within that the thing. And remember nesting down, nesting up, and we're talking about like weird things. Like it looks like it's nested down, but from a programmatic view, it's actually not. It's more like alongside of, in parallel to. And you can't call variables that are in parallel to. So if you had a else statement, for example, or if you had an if statement right here, right? And you assigned a variable in here. And then you did an else if. And you assigned that same variable in here. 
these are two different variables okay for the purposes of everything they're alongside nesting down you can do nesting up no nesting to the lateral no only down so far okay so this is asdsd of this situation and this is asdsd of this other situation it's like two parallel universes one has no effect on the other they both can ex exist simultaneously and they both can call the uh, variables that were established upstream because they're pulling it down into their nesting so if i created a string variable asd asd well let's type asd asd right then i can totally call asd asd in this actually sorry that's a method equals asd I just want to show you like a non-error line, so that, that that's what you get. And then if I typed in something, I don't feel like it right now. But if I typed in something here that was similar to this, and then I did some similar, I could like give it a totally different variable because I've done an upstream downstream type situation. Okay, let's get rid of those lines for right now, and let's get rid of this for right now because we're not really doing anything with it that's good enough all right i just want to clean up because i don't like errors so that is why this finally is actually happening as we would define parallel to not in a nested fashion of the other one even though we're writing it nested we're just writing this one nested for simplicity purposes but technically speaking it's occurring at, at the equivalency of an if else if statement. We could have done this, right? We could have done something in here. And maybe we did. And then independent of that, we're doing this other thing. Which is why we can have an SE and an SE2, even though an SE has already been used five lines before it. And they mean two different things. Okay, so we've gotten through a basic idea of, sorry, I used, how we're going to create a class for MySQL, how we've extended that, how we connect to it, what or how we create a method call connect, how do we then create the variables that we need, initialize and do something with those variables, get data from all that garbage that we've finally set up, do something with the data, which we really didn't talk about a lot. And then how do we clean up our environment so that we don't cause problems for the next time we need to use this or other code that uh, calls for uh, connections or statements to be ran against the same database? Because you could create, I mean, you could create six different databases and have these guys populating it too independently. That is not an issue. Um, although... Uh, maybe it would be a little bit now that I'm thinking about like I'm trying to like, connection would be an issue because your connection <sighs> no your connection would be unique so if you had two databases you can make two connections simultaneously to them do stuff and then close them out separately and it would be unaffected to each other because they run independent of each other even though uh, your you, the the words are closed and it seems very broad. Uh, it's literally only closing the connection to that database with that user and that password. So if we did a different database or we did a different user and different password, we could actually run multiple sessions, and that would actually be one way to get around th these problems. For example, it, let's say up here. In the higher level let's say right at the connection right let's say we set up a new thing where we said if connection does not equal null right then we could actually do something where where we go sorry spaces are getting on me a little bit 
we actually could do something here where we like say try user one right and then try user two and then finally you know give up right finally give up and we do something to give up but that would allow us to have multiple users and passwords connecting to um these threads and having like we could almost do it where each individual like if you really wanted to push the line to the farthest extreme each user could have its own connection set up dedicated connection or every 10 users or every five users or 100 users or 10,000 users like you could you if you think about how we can do this and how we can use this technology you realize that we can break this up into groups individual users however you want to so that there's less likely a chance for slowdown we could also change the servers like we could say um, first five users are going here, the next five users are going to this other server, the next five users are all going to the other server. And that would work, assuming that we had three servers that were, like, clustered together, and we were just running connections to different front ends. <coughs> don't want to overcomplicate things. Really don't. But, just keep in mind that what we're ending, when I say we we're closing this, is we're co-closing what we've defined okay and if if it doesn't meet all three of these variables it's not closing that connection it's not closing all connections to your database server it's only closing the one that was set up earlier in the session and if that session does not exist because it's null or some of the else or it's not closed then it would go into these SQL print stack traces and once again I will say that uh well not, not once again but i will say that doing these other things i talked about in the last like five seconds ten seconds where you have multiple connections different groups things like that may add layers of connect uh complexity that increase your errors and if you don't think about how your errors are being handled appropriately uh you could have a far worse situation than a little bit slow like it might be easier just to let it queue through and do everything because it, it won't have it this code will have very little problem for most servers it, it's literally where you start to do other things and you forget to error handle properly that you're going to have more problems now it's almost five usually don't go this late I just wanted to make sure we got through these key components on the MySQL connecting to it, running queries against it, because we talked about last time all the hash map stuff, and now I wanted to talk about the SQL stuff. Because in the next session, we're going to be combining the two where we're going to read data from here, and we're going to modify these codes as necessary. We're going to do what we need to do to get the data, and then we're going to put it into hash maps. Okay? So that's probably what we're going to do tomorrow. And I hope to see everyone here tomorrow. And um, thank you for, for watching if you watched. Uh, thank you for following if you're following. And uh, I really do appreciate uh, everyone's um, joining. And I, I want to just recommend that if you have questions, joining these live sessions and asking the questions is really your best bet because I'm going super slow on purpose. Um, in fact, when I did my um, my post on on the, the bucket forums for this, I literally said that we're doing this at a spoon-fed pace. And you can see, like, we only got through this little bit of code and it took two hours. It took me less than two hours to write this stupid code. And... And... Uh, it's not even the one that I wrote. It's like an early version that I, I clearly forgot to save up. And I we didn't even take the time to stop it. Because I knew that we weren't going to be covering things that weren't in this. But um, it's no problem for you to ask questions. You can ask as many questions as you want. I want you guys to be able to um, feel comfortable 
about what's going on. And if you want to talk about what we're typing, or if you want to talk about what about, like, how would I do this, this, or this, I'll just tell you, we're not going to cover it in this session, but we're going to cover it later on, or we're going to totally cover it right now, and I will tell you the answer right now. Um, either way, either way, it's, it's not a problem. So, thank you for watching, thank you for following, and I will see you around either later tonight or tomorrow, whatever you guys uh, tune in next. Thank you, thank you, bye-bye.